Heidi ho there my lovies welcome back to crazy but not dangerous hello to all my lovies hello to all my new subscribers let me tell you your response yeah to Brennan Kane's post on Instagram has just been overwhelming I don't know what to say or do besides thank you so much I cannot believe your all's generosity of spirit and thank you so much for liking subscribing and your beautiful comments thank you once again to brennan kane what a nice young man he is yay hooray your mama should be so proud of you um i'd be happy to call her and let her know you're a nice man yeah absolutely and i've done that before anyhow um terrific I wanted to come on here and say hello and introduce myself. I'm Shorty Vaughn. My mother gave me a real name. It's Tanya. Tanya Vaughn is my real name. And I live in Glendale, Arizona, USA. And I love Arizona. I've also lived in Oklahoma. And I liked Oklahoma, but really, um, I call Arizona home. And I love the desert and the animals and the sights and the smells. There is a great smell to the desert if you've never been, especially on like a rainy day. We had a rainy day on yesterday, Friday, and there's this smell of the desert and the creosote and the cactus and just yeah, in the days after a rain, you'll start to see like different desert wildflowers pop up. And I just love that. We'll have to take a trip out to the desert. We live in the city and um, that's just fine with me because I grew up in Cave Creek, Arizona, which is a very small town north of Phoenix. And at the time when I was growing up, it was very remote, very much the Wild West. Um, like my elementary school had a hitching post and you could ride your horse to school. Some kids did. Some, I took the bus. Yeah, we didn't ride to school, but we, you know, had horses and livestock and all of those great kinds of things. And it was super fun growing up, but I knew that town living was going to be for me. Yeah, I wanted to live somewhere where you could get cable television, where you had a reliable water resource, where the grocery store was not too far. So about um, a little bit over a half a mile from my house is a nice shopping center and it has everything in it from doctor's offices to an Albertsons. Um, it's got a drugstore. It's got a McDonald's if you're so inclined. You'd think I would be tempted by living so close to a McDonald's, but no, not, not in particular. So we haven't really eaten at McDonald's in a very, very long time. Um, what else? We are a family in this household of three humans, myself, Andrew, and my baby sister, Melissa. There's actually just a couple of years difference between her and I, but I will always consider her my baby sister. Um, and then her dog Boots, and he is like a blue healer. And I have a little white chihuahua named Pigpin. Um, we also have a feral cat that lives outside that I have kind of adopted. And we feed and take care of him. His name is F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, we both like to read. We're science and math nerds, and we have an everlasting love of Jeopardy. We watch very religiously and uh, just can't get enough of the Jeopardy. Yeah, miss Alex Trebek a lot. But, you know, Ken Jennings, he's no slouch. I'll take him, baby. Um, what else? What else goes on around here? Yeah, I don't know. Anyhow, so I get on here. I do this little Tales from the Step Stool. And I usually tell some kind of humorous story. So I'm going to tell you about um, our dog, Angel. Angel was a dog. She was the first dog that we ever had together. So we bought this house. And prior to that, we had lived in like apartments and condominiums and didn't feel like it was right to have a dog because, 
we both worked full time and to leave a dog in a very small condo or a, apartment just w all day long and we worked a lot back then so it wasn't really fair so when we got the house when we settled into more of a suburban kind of a lifestyle we weren't here there and yonder all over the place we decided we would get a dog we talked about it we agreed on it and yeah we agreed on a um, medium to large size dog with very short fur because we both have allergies and because of my you know i don't like to scrub that much i like things neat and tidy but i don't really like to you know have to put a whole lot of effort into it anyhow we had agreed on this andrew went on a business trip he used to travel a lot um in his work back then and he was gone and i was bored and decided i would go to the humane society and i would go get a dog yeah we already agreed on it i can pick one out just i had asked him is there any kind of dog in particular i don't know one with four legs you know something nice okay all right well I'll keep my eye open so anyhow I went down to the Humane Society and I'm looking at all the dogs and I'm like what, what's these dogs are on sale on this row well this is the e-list these are the dogs that aren't going to make it if they don't get adopted in the next three days and they're 50% off <gasps> really they're 50% off you know in my heart it like skipped a beat I'm sorry that they're going to, you know, they're on the e-list. That's terrible. But 50% off, that's for me. So I'm going down the row and I'm like, that one's too big. That one's too small. And they've all got the eyes. They're looking at me. And I want to take them all home. My heart is just breaking for these dogs. Too much fur. Not enough fur. You know, I get to this one and I, she's beautiful she's just brown and she's got tons of black eyeliner around her eyes she's got beautiful hair and eyebrows and she's really stout and muscular and she's just gorgeous says her name is angel and she's got a big star by her name so i asked the attendant to come over and talk to me about angel i said well I, I, I think I'd like to take Angel home. She looks at me all surprised and she says, are you sure? And I said, well, yeah, I think so. Let's take her out and have a look at her. She says, well, we can do that in a minute. I've got a few questions for you. I go, okay. She says, do you have any cats? I said, no, we have no children. Okay. Do you have a six foot or better um, height fence? around your entire yard I said yeah yeah it's a little bit better than six foot okay and do you have any other pets dog cats rats bats like, no we've got no other pets she would be our only pet at this time she said are you prepared to have her as your only pet for the rest of her life I said okay well something's up here ding 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 um you've got to tell me what's wrong with this dog well she was a little bit scarred up around the face and around the body a little bit um she had been a bait dog for dog fighting and dog fighting is a real problem in arizona anyhow she had been a bait dog for dog fighting and she had ran away she got picked up by the humane society and they tended her wounds and got her all stitched up um, but she did not do well with other dogs she was terrified of them and she also had never been around little kids and she didn't like pet cats and she yeah she didn't like a lot of things and I said yeah I'll take her yeah she's kind of mean I said okay well let's see how mean she is they're like well you're gonna have to get in this fenced in area and we're gonna have to get all of the rest of the dogs out and we'll put a chair in there for you and we recommend that you sit there very still and don't make any sudden moves I'm thinking oh my gosh 
like I'm already in love with her but now I'm a little bit terrified at the same time anyhow I sat in this chair and I they brought her in they let her off the leash and she runs up and she starts barking at me just barking and barking and like the saliva is just coming out she's working herself into a dither and I'm just sitting there and I'm just looking at her and I'm not moving or I'm not trying to pet her or anything and she eventually barks herself into exhaustion after about 30 minutes and then she sits down and she kind of looks at me and I said you done yeah got it all out of your system baby she kind of tilted her head at me and you know kind of gave me like a little dog shrug or what have you I put my hand out and she came over and gave me a sniff and let me scratch behind her ear and that just did it anyhow the look in that dog's eye just changed and I knew that we were going to be great friends I'm gonna wrap her up I'll take her with me and they gave me all kinds of things to go home with you're really gonna take her oh yeah like, we've taken her home she does great when she gets settled in just be patient and so I put her in the car and we get in the car and we drive home and she cries the whole way she hates the car but we're having this little conversation in the car you know you're welcome in my home you're a welcome member of my family I'm going to adore you I hope that you like us and really the only rule is don't potty in the house I'll show you where to go you're gonna have food water shelter plenty of love you can sleep in the bed and you can sleep on the couch but you'll have your own little special blanket on the couch because you know we've got to keep that nice for company anyhow she seemed to understand she's looking at me and giving me the eyes I'm like okay baby it'll be all right I get out of the car I go over to get her I open the door I grab her leash and she jumps out and she takes off with me and I've got a you know the grip on the leash and she takes off she drags me on my belly across three yards and I finally like get hung up on somebody's mailbox it stops me and stops her and finally get control of the leash and control her and I bring her home we get inside and she sniffs all around and I show her to outside where she goes potty and we're just having a great time and Andrew's gone for like four more days. So the dog and I spend all these four days like bonding together and developing this relationship and she's funny and quirky and I just adore her. Anyhow, I didn't tell Andrew. He calls me every night after work and he's telling me about how his day's going and everything and I don't tell him about the dog. I'm going to let it be a surprise. He walks through the door. He took a cab home from the airport because transportation was part of his business agreement. So he walks through the door and that dog Angel goes running across the house and she's got him cornered up against the wall he's got like his carry-on in his hands and he's just standing there Tanya there's a dog in the house it's trying to kill me it's trying to kill me anyhow I come rushing up behind her angel angel it's all right baby that's daddy you don't know daddy yet <laughs> I get her by the call her and slap the leash on and I take her outside to give her a break let Andrew get inside the house and put his back down what did you do I got a dog I can see that did you get the meanest dog at the Humane Society I said yeah yeah she was I had to fill out like this questionnaire and get the third degree before they let I can see why anyhow that's how we got our first dog, Angel, and I absolutely loved her. And I can tell you that when he was traveling, I never worried about anything because that dog had my back. Absolutely. So fast forward a few years and Andrew's mother fell and broke her hip. She lived in Bakersfield, California, and um, we had to go out there to get her situated figure out what we were going to do with her and how best to help her but you couldn't take 
angel to um, boarding because she couldn't she never learned to get along with other dogs or any other pets and you couldn't leave her with anyone with small children because small children made her very nervous so that eliminates most of the people in my family so we're just gonna have to take her with us and we're going to have to drive because there's no way she could even go you know on an airplane so we're driving two cars I'm driving mine he's driving his because I'm going to stay in Bakersfield he's going there to get some legal stuff taken care of between him and his mother and then he has to drive back because he still has to work to keep us all up so um angel and i are in my car and i've given her a little doggy volume because she does not like the car she cries the whole way even with the doggy volume she still cried the whole 10 hours from phoenix to bakersfield quietly less much more quietly than she would have had she not had the doggy volume but she was still really upset so we are on the five freeway in california and we're going to hook up in just like 30 minutes to the 99 to go north to bakersfield and so we're driving and it's like rush hour traffic it's always rush hour traffic in los angeles and it's stop and go stop and go and angel is just beside herself in the stop and go traffic it's driving her even more yeah she's out of her mind almost and i've got her seat belted in and i'm driving and i'm singing like little songs to her and talking to her and she's in the back seat because i think dogs are nice and safe in the back seat especially if you get them a little doggy seat belt kind of a thing anyhow i'm singing to her and i think we're just we're going along maybe it's 15 20 miles an hour if we're lucky and all of a sudden i don't hear her crying in the back seat i slam on the brakes and i look behind me and she's not back there anymore the window had been cracked just like this much and she was a pretty darn big dog anyhow she had wriggled out of her seatbelt and somehow made it through the little crack in the window i don't even know how she got her head out of there let alone the rest of her body but she squeezed out i put the car in park and i get out of the car and here she is she's running down the five freeway in california and i start running after her andrew's right behind me in his car and he puts the emergency brakes on, puts his car in park, and now we're both chasing this dog down the five freeway in California. People are getting out of their cars. People are trying to get 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 Angel. And the, meanwhile, there's a traffic helicopter above us, and yet we have caused a sensation. We have caused a sensation on a California freeway in the middle of rush hour. Andrew caught Angel and he's got her and she's enormous. She's like 95 pounds and he's carrying her and I'm crying. Tears are streaming down my face and she looks just as happy as she can be. Just, you know, panting and everything like that. She's we put Andrew shoves her in the back of my car, slams the door, rolls the window up, and says, "Get in the car, and I'll get going, because we're gonna be on the news." Anyhow, he was not wrong. We were totally on the news. He takes off in front of me, and I don't even see him. I'm so shooken up. I have to get off the five at the very next exit and pull into a convenience store because I need to take deep breaths before I get back on a California freeway and I need to look at the dog and make sure she's okay because I was moving 15, 20, 25 miles an hour when she jumped out the window. Want to make sure that she's okay. Yeah, so we were a mess. We caused um, a sensation on the California freeway. You may have seen the footage every now and then, like on America's Funniest Videos, they did not name us. You really can't tell that it's me, but it's me 
and Andrew and about five other people trying to wrangle this dog out on the California freeway. She was fine. She was unhurt. But Andrew did not follow me off the five to the convenience store. He just kept going. He just kept going. He So about, and this is before like cell phones. So he couldn't just call me on the phone and where are you? Yeah. Nope. No cell phone. Um, I can't remember the phone number to his mother's house, but we couldn't even get in because she was in the hospital. And when she fell and broke her hip, she took her purse with her. So, you know, he was going to the hospital to go get the keys so we could get in the house and put the dog in the backyard and then figure out the rest of, rest of the life, you know. But yeah, yep, that dog got in all kinds of trouble. Yeah, she was so mischievous, but I loved that about her. You never knew what was next. And she'd just lay around and take naps and get belly rubs. And we would go for walks during times when you did not think you were going to encounter anyone else. And if you did encounter someone else with a dog or a small child, basically we, we had to stop. And then I would hold her with both hands as tightly as I possibly could until they went on their way. And then we would continue on in the opposite direction. But people would be like, oh, my dog wants to play with your dog. You gotta get going. My dog's gonna eat your dog. Anyhow, I loved her and I love dogs. Piggy is from the Humane Society. He was also 50% off on the e-list. And um, anyhow, he's mostly blind. He only has one tooth and none of his legs are the same length. So he's always kind of lopsided. And I just love that about him. He falls over all the time, bless his little baby heart, but he gives the best squeezes. And um, yeah, just love him. Just love dogs, even love the feral cat. Yep. So yep, that's my little story about our dog Angel and our I-5 you know, freeway incident. We were really lucky that nothing happened, but that's my little Tales from the Step stool today. All right, my lovies, be good, be careful, look both ways, and if you see someone running down the freeway after their dog, well, just give them a minute and they'll figure it out and get back to it. And They'll be really sorry. They won't have any way to tell you, but they will be really embarrassed and they will be really sorry for having um, caused such a delay. Yep, I know. All right, be good, be careful, look both ways. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous.